In this video, I tried beating Terraria using magic weapons only, but here's the twist. Most, if not all, magic weapons have gotten reworked, changing their attacks completely. Not only this, but these weapons are able to gain experience to level up when I attack monsters. With each level, increases the damage, critical strike chance, attack speed, and best of all, the number of projectiles. How good are these reworked magic weapons, and just how strong will they become? Stay tuned, because you're about to find out. Here we go. So the first weapon I've decided to get is going to be the Valthorn. It's very easy to get and outshines most pre-hard mode magic weapons. All I'm going to need are some bombs. Alright, I have 24 bombs now. That should be enough. Let's go back up and try to find the corruption. Ooh, that's a lot more bombs. I'll take that. Let's just pray that I only have to break two shadow orbs and not summon the boss. Okay, finally made it down. Here we go. Musket. And... No! Another one? Okay, well that's not good. That means for sure I'm gonna have to summon the boss. So if I don't get it this time, then I'm gonna have to teleport home. Moment of truth. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, get me out. Okay, second attempt. There it is. Alright, let's see the reworked version of this weapon. Three, two, one. Wait. Oh, there's a charge up. Okay. Can I test it on these guys? Oh. Oh. Not bad. I don't have quite enough mana though to actually charge it up fully. Uh, let's see if this will help. Charge it up. Oh, wait. It wasn't to the max, but I did see four Valthorns that just came out. Okay, the damage is kind of weak, though. Would it be better if I just attacked normally? Oh, no, not at all. Oh, my God. We'll see how good this weapon becomes when I start leveling it up. But right now, it has 10 magic damage and 8% critical strike chance. All right, it is now at level 1, so it gained... 2 magic damage, and 1% critical strike chance. I think it also lowered the mana cost by 1 as well. Now that I'm back up onto the surface, let's build a little house to store my stuff away. There we go, all cleaned out. And because I mined enough topaz from earlier, I'm gonna craft the topaz hook. Let's head into the jungle now to find some more life crystals and accessories. I'm also gonna farm enough materials to craft the full jungle armor. A couple of life crystals down here. These two are going to bring me to 200 health. And there we go. Oh, there's the nature's gift. Ancient cobalt breastplate. Does that give mana? Oh, yeah, it does. Increases maximum mana by 20 and 6% increased magic damage. That's pretty good. Band of regeneration. Oh, and that's perfect. The Anklet of the Wind. I do have the Aglet as well, so I can combine these two accessories to make the Lightning Boots later on. God damn, that's a lot of rubies. Which means I can summon the King Slime a whole bunch of times. And that's going to be a lot of experience. And there's the Suspicious Looking Eye. Oh, yes, there we go. Hermes Boots. And two more Life Crystals down here. Which is going to bring me to 300 health. So I just need 5 more until max health. And here's the last life crystal for max health. Oh, tell me that's enough diamonds. 13? Wait, wait, wait. There's a diamond cluster right over there. Hopefully I can get more than just one. Okay. Looks like I can upgrade my topaz hook to the diamond hook. Let's get out of here. First things first, the diamond hook. Then the full jungle armor set. Oh wait, am I missing something? Oh, I needed more jungle spores. Unless this ancient cobalt breastplate counts towards the jungle armor set. Let's see. Put on the hat and pants. Wait, it does. Okay, that's good to know. So the set bonus reduces our mana cost 
by 16%. That's huge. Let's also craft the Platinum Pickaxe. And then a couple of Platinum Crowns. Let's go back to the Corruption to craft ourselves some Slime Crowns. Alright, let's go back home and summon the King Slime. Here we go. Okay, not bad. I probably should have made a bigger arena, but it should be all good. Almost done here. One more shot. Boom. And then let's clear out the rest. Okay, all done. I've noticed that the kickback is a lot more stronger now. Oh my god. I can shoot myself up into the air. So defeating the King Slime has brought my Valthorn to level 4. So now it has 19 magic damage and 20 critical strike chance. I also just realized I don't consume my Slime Crowns for this mod. But just to be more fair, I'm going to count it as using one summon. So let's get rid of one. So I can do this one more time. Oh my, what was that damage? Did the boss just go from full health to less than 50%? Oh, this thing is getting strong. It is at level 5 now. Got the slimy saddle. Let's build some NPC houses to sell some stuff. Once the merchant spawns in. Let's sell my items. And now I pretty much just wait until nighttime to summon the Eye of Cthulhu. But meanwhile, I'm just going to expand the arena a bit more. It is finally nighttime. Let's go ahead and summon the boss. Oh my! Wait. That is a bit too much. Second phase. Gotta go pick up those stars. Oh, that was massive damage. Almost done here. One more shot. All done. Oh, that is beautiful. A warding shield of Cthulhu. And because it is night, I'm going to make use of this time to find as many fallen stars as possible to increase my max mana. Okay, that's about it for the right side. Let's go to the left. And that is it for the left side. So I've gotten, wow, exactly 50 fallen stars. That should be enough for max mana. Oh yeah. So I now have 280 mana. Let's go take on the Eater of Worlds now. And for this boss fight, I really don't think I'm going to have to build an arena. Because I know for a fact that this weapon is going to shred this boss. Alright, here we go. Charge it up. Where is it coming from? Right here. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm really not a fan of this kickback. Look at it. Okay, get some mana stars. Oh my god. Oh, I need to get out of here. Almost done already. <laughs> Just one more chunk. All done. There are enough shadow orbs to summon the boss one more time. So I might as well do it for as much experience as possible. Last one. Here we go. And all done. Defeating the Eater of Worlds twice has brought my Valthorn to level 8. And I'm 100% certain now that the more I level up this weapon, the stronger the kickback is. Look at that. I am not a fan of that. 
Although, I will admit that it's very useful to get to places faster. But while fighting bosses, that's a no-no. With some shadow skills and demonite bars, I can now craft the nightmare pickaxe. Let's make my way to the dungeon now and build an arena for Skeltron. And to showcase just how good this weapon is for travel, I'm going to charge it up. 3, 2, 1. Wait. Okay. I forgot, I can still take fall damage. But yeah, it just propels me so far forward. And I'm already at the dungeon. A one-leveled platform should be more than enough. Let's put down a campfire. And wait until nighttime. Okay, it's time. Let's talk to the old man to summon the boss. Three, two, one. And we're gonna aim the hands first. Boom! Oh, that almost one sh- Oh! Oh my god, wait! No, no, no! Did that really just happen? I propelled myself so far away from the boss that it despawned. Okay. I might have to build some barriers around the arena. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. Okay, that should be high enough. Wait, is that another Sky Island? Oh, it is. Please, I really need the Lucky Horseshoe. Yes! Thank you! Let's try this thing again. Three, two, one. Boom! Oh, I missed. We're good though. We take no more fall damage. There we go. One shot the hand. Oh, get away from that. Second hand is done. Just ahead now. I need those mana stars. Come on. All right. Oh, heal up. Charge it up. Boom. And Skeletron has been defeated. Now that I have access into the dungeon, I have a few things that I'm looking for. The Cobalt Shield, of course. The Water Bolt. The Aqua Scepter. The Magic Missile. And the Shadow Key. Ooh, and a Meteorite has landed. That means I will be able to craft the Meteor Armor Set. And the Space Gun. Okay, found the Water Bolt. Got Agile on it. Now, what has changed about this weapon. Oh. Okay, so it takes a while to charge up. After it charges up, it shoots. And it looks to be the same, to be honest. Oh, never mind. It is completely different. So it now ricochets off of enemies. Wait, I kind of like this weapon. Anyways, let's open the first gold chest. Muramasa, not what I'm looking for. Second one. Okay, there's the Aqua Scepter. Here's the third one. Okay. The Cobalt Shield and the Shadow Key. And the Aqua Scepter also charges up. Oh, but shoots like multiple streams at the same time now. Before, it would only shoot one. There's the magic missile. And it has Masterful too. Ooh. Wait, this is nice. So it looks like I won't use any mana at all. As long as I keep the magic missile that I'm controlling alive. I guess that would apply to the flame lash as well. Whenever I get that weapon. I think I've gotten everything that I wanted in the dungeon. Let's teleport back home. And the next task is to mine down to hell. Finally made it down to hell. Let's go mine some hellstone. As well as open any shadow chests that I stumble upon. Here's one. Oh! Flower of Fire. Kind of forgot about this weapon. Any changes to this one? Also a charge up. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use this weapon. I was really never a fan of it. Okay, that should be enough Hellstone. 
I don't need too much because I'm only going to craft the Molten Pickaxe. Let's try to find the Flame Lash before I leave, though. There it is. And was I right about the Flame Lash being the same as the Magic Missile? I was not. Wait, this is so much better. Because for the Magic Missile, the projectiles circle around me. So that means that if I want to do damage, I'm going to have to go up really close to enemies. But for this weapon, it follows the cursor. Let's craft the Molten Pickaxe. And then I'm going to search for the meteorite that fell. Oh, there it is. Oh, it fell into the corruption hole. Alright, the meteorite is pretty much cleared out. I've got 383. Let's make the full meteor armor set. Each piece gives 9% increased magic damage. So in total, that'll be 27%. And then the space gun. Oh, that is so appealing to the eye. Way better than the original space gun. I don't have anything else to craft with the meteorite bars. And because I have 80, I'm just going to keep on crafting the space gun for a better modifier. Okay, there we go. Murderous. I can make two more. Strong and... Oh, yes. Masterful. I think it's time to say goodbye to the Valthor now. I've got it to level 10, but now that it's at such a high level, it takes up so much mana just to charge it up. So at 100%, it takes up 120 mana. I'm not going to use it for fighting, but I will keep it just for the mobility. All that's left now is to take on the Wall of Flesh. Actually, you know what? Let's not take on the Wall of Flesh just yet. My mobility is pretty bad right now. I don't have any double jump, no jump height increase. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to summon the Goblin Army to find the Goblin Tinkerer. Then I'll be able to purchase the Tinkerer's Workshop and Rocket Boots. And once I combine everything together, I'll be able to make the Lightning Boots. I also do plan on finding the last Sky Island for the Shiny Red Balloon. Alright, that's enough Tattered Cloths. Let's go back home to craft the Goblin Battle Standard. There we go. And let's just summon them right away. Let's also keep track of our Space Gun's level. It is at level 1 right now with 27 magic damage and 9% critical strike chance. Alright, here we go. Okay, Goblin Army has been defeated. Which brings the Space Gun to... Wow, level 5. So it now has 38 magic damage and 13% critical strike chance. It's also able to shoot out. I think that's up to 3 lasers. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's go find the Goblin Tinkerer now. Ooh, Cloud in a Bottle, I'll take that. So once I find the Shiny Red Balloon, I can craft the Blue Horseshoe Balloon. Oh, there he is. Okay, let's purchase the Rocket Boots and the Workshop. I'm also going to try to reforge the Space Gun to get Mythical on it. No, I just skipped over it. Oh my god. Well, there goes uh, about 30 gold. Oh my god. Am I really not going to get it again? There we go. Oh my, I wasted like 60 gold. It's okay, it's okay. I'll make that all back later on. But at least the space gun shoots a lot faster now. Let's try to find the shiny red balloon before I start combining my accessories. Okay, here's the last Sky Island. And there's the shiny red balloon. First, let's make the lightning boots. Then the blue horseshoe balloon. Obsidian shield. Oh, wait, I got warding on this. Nice. And I might as well just combine the band of regeneration and star power. 
to make the mana regeneration band. Okay, now I'm all set to take on the Wall of Flesh. Made it to the end of the world. Let's drink my potions. And then let's toss in the Voodoo Doll. Three, two, one. Here we go. Oh yeah, wait. This space gun is destroying this boss. Oh my god. That was so quick. I actually was not expecting that. Let's open up our treasure bag and see what I get. The only two things I'm looking for are the sorcerer's emblem and the laser rifle. Three, two, one. Okay, I got the laser rifle. Not the sorcerer's emblem though, which is unfortunate. But if I ever do find the shimmer pool, I can always turn this ranger emblem into the sorcerer's emblem. And the laser rifle is pretty much the same thing as the space gun. Just a lot faster and more damage, of course. But the weapon does not work with the meteor armor set effect. So yeah, I do end up using mana for this weapon. Let's go back into the corruption now to break some demon altars. We've got cobalt, mithril, and adamantite. Got enough cobalt. Onto the mithril. Ooh, the bound wizard. Let's buy the crystal ball and a whole bunch of mana potion. That's enough mithril. Lastly, the adamantite. And that should be enough adamantite. Now let's make the full adamantite armor set. Let's go up to a sky island now to kill some wyverns for their souls of flight. And then I can make myself a pair of wings. Okay, that's enough. Oh my god, you got shredded. I've got 43 now. And my laser rifle is at level 6. And that should be enough souls of light. Let's go craft angel wings. Alright. I'm pretty much all set to take on the mechanical bosses now. But while I wait for nighttime to arrive, I'm going to go down to the spider's nest and try to get myself the poison staff. Oh, there it is. Let's see what this thing does. Oh, it's more of a machine gun than a shotgun spread. Wait, and it only uses two mana? This might be really good when I level it up. But I'm not sure if I should even level it up because once I upgrade it to the Venom Staff, all of the levels will just get reset. So I might hold off on it until I'm able to mine some Chlorophytes. Okay, nighttime has finally arrived. So the first mechanical boss that I'll be taking on will be the Destroyer. Three, two, one, let's go. Fly over to the clumped up part. Oh, what? What, what, what did I just witness? How in the world did the destroyer get blown up like that? Wait, what level is my laser rifle now? Whoa! Level 15? Oh my god, look at this thing. This is a monster. Okay, I might as well just use this laser rifle to take care of the remaining mechanical bosses. Next up, let's do the twins. Now, are you going to get blown up too? Okay, not as fast as the destroyer. But still, this is pretty quick. Okay, twins have been defeated. Last one, Skeletron Prime. Jesus, it covers the entire boss. <laughs> there we go. All three mechanical bosses have been defeated. Let's make the pickaxe axe now. And I think I'm going to keep the adamantite armor sets because 
I really enjoy the 19% reduced mana cost. I'm also going to check out the Magical Harp because I do have enough materials to craft it. There we go. Anything new about this? Oh. No, there isn't. Okay, I won't be using it then. Let's head into the jungle now to mine some chlorophyte. And potentially to find the Plantera Bulb. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to turn the Nature's Gift into the Mana Flower. So let's put down this bottle. And then let's make the Mana Potion to then craft the Mana Flower. Okay, now I can automatically use Mana Potions. Wait, I think I might know now why the Destroyer got blown up so fast. Once a single laser pierces an enemy, there's these little sparks that come out. I'm not sure if you guys can see them, because it's way too hard to tell now. Right there, right there. See those little tiny sparks that come out? Those deal damage as well. So it's not only a visual effect. And same thing goes with the space gun as well, which explains why I destroyed the wall of flesh so fast. Okay, hopefully that's enough chlorophyte to turn the poison staff into the venom staff. Oh yeah, it's enough. Okay. Let's see what this bad boy does. Three, two, one. Ew. What is this purple snake thing? This is so weird, but um... I'm down to test it out. Wait, that... <laughs> that damage was not normal, what? It only has 67 magic damage, but I dealt 730 crit damage. Okay, let's try it on this green slime. Okay, that's... that's a lot more normal. Is it that weird purple snake thing that deals majority of the damage? Let's test it out one more time. Okay, so it doesn't hit through blocks. Uh... Oh! <laughs> yeah, okay. The purple snake looking thing definitely deals the most damage. Let's try to get mythical on this thing. Okay, this costs quite a bit of gold. One more. Ooh. That's bad. Okay. There goes all of my money. But at least I gained 20% increased speed. Let's see. Ooh. Now that's fast. And I have located the Plantera Bulb, so I'm going to build an arena around here. Okay, the arena is all complete. Let's break the bulb to summon the boss. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. This opens not bad. Oh no! Wait! Get off me! No, 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 no. Oh my god, that spider. Oh, thank god. That spider almost messed me up. That was way too close. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna make the Venom Staff my main weapon now. Although, I still think that the laser rifle is way stronger. I kind of don't want to keep on using this thing. Because then it would start to get boring for not only me, but for you guys as well. But anyways, now that Plantera has been defeated, I'm going to go into the dungeon to kill some monsters there for some more weapons. Oh my god, no way. That was my first kill. Uh, anything new about this weapon? I can levitate. But damage-wise, this thing is... Very weak. Ooh, the black belt. If I can get my hands on the tabby, I can craft the master ninja gear. Oh, okay. The shadow beam staff. No! Oh, come on. And we're back. Okay, got the shadow beam staff. Looks to be the same. Oh, no, it's not. 
So this weapon now auto locks onto enemies. Oh, there's the Pappy. Oh, there's the Infernal Fork. And it has Masterful on it. Ooh. Wait, this is nice. So I don't shoot out a fireball anymore. Instead, orcs just come out of the ground. This weapon is a bit slow for my liking. So I don't think I'm going to be using it. As for the Shadow Beam Staff, the speed is alright, but damage wise, it doesn't even compare to the Venom Staff. So I think I'm just going to settle with the Venom Staff. And there's the Magnet Sphere, which is the last magic weapon to get in the dungeon. Oh my god, that is loud. Jesus! Wait, even when I stop clicking, it's still active. Okay, back home. So let's make the Master Ninja Gear. That's going to replace our Shield of Cthulhu. And then I'll be heading into the temple to take on Golem. Okay, made it into the boss room. And this is pretty big. Let's clear out all of the traps first. Okay, I'm back to full HP. Let's start this thing up. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. Wait, this weapon's so good against the boss. And Golem has been defeated. You know what? Let's just try out all of the magic weapons that I have and see which one is the best. Here we go again. Okay. Yeah, definitely not this one. Next up is the Shadow Beam Staff. Eh, this one's alright. Next up, the Magnet Sphere. Okay, definitely not this one. Spectre Staff is next. Maybe if I leveled this thing up, it would be good. Because then I'd be able to shoot multiple of these projectiles. And finally, the laser rifle. Oh my god. It even covers Golem entirely. Let's open up our treasure bag and see if we can get any other magic weapons. Golem fist, nope. Uh, I have the golem. Last one. Another I have the golem. Okay. I have one more left. And hopefully I can get my hands on either the heat ray or the staff of the earth. Alright, all done. What level is my Venom Staff at? 13, wow. And this purple worm thing officially reaches the ends of my screen. Here we go, last treasure bag. No, okay. I'm not gonna leave here until I get either one of those magic weapons. All right, I've got two more. That's one. And that's two. Come on, give me the heat ray. Beautiful. And how about the staff of the earth? Okay, never mind. At least I got one of them. Anything new with this weapon? Oh, the visuals are definitely different, but functionality wise, it kind of looks the same. Let's take on Golem one more time with the Heat Ray. Okay, all done. 
So just from one golem, brought my heat ray to level five. Oh my god, and there's the Staff of Earth. Ooh, unfortunately, there's no change though. Now, I'm not going to go straight to take on the Lunatic Cultist. Instead, I'm going to go to the ocean and summon Duke Fishron. So let's go get ourselves a couple of Truffle Worms to summon the boss. Okay, I got three Truffle Worms. Let's head to the ocean now. And I will be using the Heat Ray for this fight. Yeah, this is pretty good. Second phase. Third phase. And Duke Fishrun has been defeated. So there's really only one weapon that I'm looking for, which many of you guys can guess. It's the Razor Blade Typhoon. Let's see if I can get it. Not this time, but we'll try again. Okay, second time's the charm. Oh, I will take that. Fishrun wings. There's also the bubble gun that I got, but I don't think this got reworked. Yeah, no. Last try before I have to collect more truffle worms. Damn, this heat ray shoots like a machine gun now. Third phase already. All done. Moment of truth. There we go. So it's a charge up. Oh! It shoots multiple instead of one. For the first shot only though. And then the rest, just basic attacks, okay. And now, let's go take on the Lunatic Cultist. Here we go. I'm also going to try to attack the clones on purpose so that I can summon out that dragon for more experience. Less than 50% health now. And all done. And now my Razor Blade Typhoon is at level 10 with 151 magic damage and 46% critical strike chance. Here's what the initial shot looks like. Oh yeah. And the corresponding shots. It looks like one, but there's actually multiple inside. Oh, I also just noticed it summons these uh, homing bubbles as well. The original version of this weapon only summons out the razor blades. Solar pillar has been destroyed. Vortex pillar is done. There goes the stardust pillar. One more left. And there goes the last pillar. Time for Moon Lord. And from those four celestial pillars, it has brought my Razor Blade Typhoon all the way to level 22. So it has 210 magic damage with 58% critical strike chance. This thing is a beast. Jesus. Here we go. Oh yeah. Wait. What? Both hands are dead already. Wait, I'm kind of low. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 okay. 
I'm getting a bit too cocky here. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. That's not gonna happen again. Round two. And now. Okay. That hands down. That one's dead as well. Gotta get ready for that laser. Fly up, dash over. We're good. Just the core now. Boom! And... Moonlord has been defeated. Alright, that's going to be it guys. Thank you all for watching. If you want to try this mod out for yourself and test out the weapons I haven't done, I'll list all the mods I've used in the description below. But anyways, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment below if you have any other mod or video ideas you want me to try out, and of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace!